Now we're going to add a pop-up for the game messages. We'll start by modifying the game session class in soscsrpg.viewmodels. And instead of directly putting messages into the text box like we used to do before, now we're going to have an observable collection property of strings. We'll put the messages into there and then our game message pop-up will have a new control that binds to that property. So the first thing we need to do is add a new using directive up here on line two using system.collections.objectmodel. Next on line 13, where we have the public class, we're going to add comma I disposable. That means this class will need to implement the I disposable interface. And we're going to use this to make sure we can get rid of all the connections we had. Uh, remember before in the game messages, sometimes the messages would be duplicated. This is one way to make sure we eliminate having those duplicated messages. Then we'll go down to lines 95 through 97 and add the new property for the game messages. It's an observable collection of strings. It's a get only. It's only going to be read by the UI. And I have a JSON ignore attribute since we don't need this in the save game file. And then on line 103, we need to add the new property, which is a pop-up details for the game message details, just like our other pop-ups. In the constructor on lines 182 through 191, we instantiate a new pop-up details with the settings we need for the top left, uh, the height, and set that to the game message details property that we just created, just like we did with all of our other pop-up detail properties. And on line 193, we're adding this line underscore message broker dot on message raised plus equal on game message raised. So this way we're going to subscribe to the message broker. And whenever the message broker raises a message, we're going to run this new on game message raised function. And that new function is down here on lines 233 through 241. It's the on game message raised. We've got the sender and the game message event args. And I've added this little if clause here on 235 to 238. If the game messages, and that's our observable collection of strings, that property, if the count is greater than 250, then we're going to remove the message or the string that's at position zero. Remember arrays are zero based. Uh, list or zero based when we use an index. So this will remove the oldest message once we go above 250 messages. If you want to make this shorter or longer, you can. I just think a player really isn't going to look back more than 250 messages. And then once we clear out that first one, if we have too many, we add the message from the event args to the game messages property. And then finally, we'll go down to lines 388 through 392. And this is a public void dispose method. Because we added that iDisposable interface, that means this class has to have a dispose function. And what this dispose function is going to do whenever we get rid of this object is going to look at the current battle and dispose of it and unsubscribe from the message broker on message raised. So this will get rid of our, the duplicated messages we had a while back. This is just a, a cleaner way of doing it. Uh, it making a class I disposable really shows the intent. It says, oh yes, we can't just kind of leave this object out here we have to dispose of it so it can clean up its connections. Now we can, get, can go into the main window.xaml.cs in the WPF UI project, and we need to add a using directive for system.collections.specialized. 
and we can get rid of the one for system.windows.documents and soscsrpg.core. We're not going to use the objects uh, from those namespaces or those classes. On line 21, there used to be a class level underscore message broker variable. Uh, you can go ahead and delete that. We're going to handle that differently. That's all handled in the game session class now, so it's not here in the XAML. On line 78 to 82, you can delete the on message raised function. Uh, that used to scroll to the end of the rich text box when we added a message, and we're going to handle that differently now. And then on line 105, we need to add the uh, user input actions. We're going to have the key M, which is going to set the game session game message details, M for messages, that will set that visible or invisible. Next, we'll go to the set active game message to function. Down here on 119. And we used to have some code in here that worked with underscore message broker. Again, you can delete that code because that's now handled inside the game session class. And what you need to do is replace it with the code I have here on lines 121 through 131. Uh, what this is going to do is, if we already have a game session, we are going to unsubscribe from the game messages collection changed, which would mean whenever we add a new message to that game messages property, we no longer care about it. This removes our subscription. Uh, here we set our backing variable and our data context for the XAML. And then here we subscribe to the new game sessions, game messages property for its collection changed event. On lines 134 to 141, add the new game messages collection changed function. This is the function that gets run up here when the game messages collection is, is changed, a new message is added or one is removed. All this does is scrolls to the end, to the bottom part of the flow document, similar to the other scroll to end function that we had. Uh, it's just, this is how you do it with a flow document scroll viewer. Then inside the start new game on click function on line 145, I added this underscore game session question mark dot dispose. So the question mark just means if the game session, if the underscore game session variable is a null, then don't bother trying to do the rest of this. So this prevents our null reference exception errors. But if it is, if there is an object in that variable, then we're going to call the dispose function. And if we take a quick look back here, that's the function that disposes of the current battle and unsubscribes from the on game message raised. So that's how we're going to make sure that we, you know, it's another part of making sure that we dispose of our I disposable objects so that we don't have that connection still to those, uh, to that old game message. And then finally, we'll go to lines 217 through 220 and add this new function, close game messages details window on click. And this sets the game session game message details is visible to false. And this is just like our other pop-ups. Uh, this is if you click that X button, it will hide the pop-up. Now we'll go into main window.xaml and we'll change the UI. The new game messages XAML is here from lines 434 down to 495. That's the new canvas. And it starts out pretty similar to the other pop-ups. We've got the canvas and we bind it up here to the top left and the height and the visibility. We've got a border. We've got a grid. Uh, we've got the kind of the title in there. We've got the X button to close it, which calls that close game messages details windows on click function. And instead of the rich text box that we used to have, we now have on lines 474 through 487, 
a flow document scroll viewer. And this is why we needed that new using directive. Uh, this is kind of like a rich text box. It, you know, it's a flow document. We get to uh, add content to it. Uh, but this is binding. Basically what it does is it says, here's, you know, kind of imagine this is the rich text box. Um, we're going to set the background to a color. And then what we're going to do is have a paragraph and bind to the game messages. And that game messages collection is going into an items control. So this is how, when we add a new message to the game messages property, this items control says, okay, well, I've got something, I've got to add another part to the flow document. And by the way, if you notice on line 43, I have Calibri as the font family. If you don't like this, let's say you're doing an Egyptian game, you could change the font family to Papyrus. Or you could change it to Comic Sans or any other font that you like. And the final step is to go delete the, uh, the previous data grid element that we had for the game messages. And that was at lines 451 through 467 uh, down here where we've got the rest of our, you know, our gameplay and our monster information. Then finally, we're going to do a build and clean and do a build and rebuild. And then we'll run the program to test it. I'll start a new game, call the player Scott. And now if I hit the M key, here's our game messages. So I go north and we get my message here about the quest that I received. Go north again, I see a snake. Use my pointy stick and we start seeing the combat in here. If I hit the M again, game messages disappears, just like all the other pop-ups like inventory and we can move it around, hide it, show it, comes back in the same place, just like all the other pop-ups that we have. As always, the source code will be on the support page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, the link to the support page will be in the description. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube video or on the support page, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible.